à tous de DDO. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. Allumage au Tavulcan. Allumage EAP, top décollage. The DDO says all is normal, and you saw at 19.20 local time, and right on time, Ariane 5 began her mission, lifting off from the ground here in French Guiana with a lot of fire, heading into the clouds with two new satellites. La propulsion est nominale. The two boosters are providing 90, that's 90% of our thrust right now, propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher velocity. 773... 773 tons at liftoff. And to get that sort of mass off the ground, you need a lot of push, and push we have. She's burning five tons of fuel per second, two and a half tons per second in each booster. And the core stage is burning another 300 kilos of fuel per second. Fine shots of Ariane 5 rising into the sky. She looks just like a comet. Ariane 5 now following the program in the onboard computer, as the DDO says, all is normal on board, which gives the orders, including stage separations, which we'll soon see. We're in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn so you can follow Arian as she, as she heads east across the Atlantic. Right now, the first flight phase, the single first stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will each consume their 240 tons in just over two minutes. In about uh, 15 seconds, they will be extinguished, and you'll hear that from the DDO. This first flight phase using both cryogenics, very cold fuel, and storable propellant. Cryogenic propulsion offering certain advantages, reignitable, more precise performance. And we move to the animation. In just about two seconds, you'll see the booster separation Separation, étage, accélération à poudre. confirmed by the DDO. They will fall 500 kilometers from the shore in a protected area. Nice shot of it there on the onboard camera. There's another booster on the uh, port side, of course, uh, out of camera range. On the bottom of your screen, on the left our altitude, on the right our speed. Speed we need for satellite separation, roughly nine kilometers per second. That's 9,000 kilometers an hour. You see where we are, just over two kilometers an hour. We have a ways to go. So keep your eyes on the numbers. And when we near the region of eight, nine kilometers per second, Le pilotage est calme. you know we will be getting close to separation. We're getting close to separation of the fairing, which is next up. That's the pointed nose cone on the right of the composite. You can see the logos on the outside of the fairing placed there by the customers. That's something of a tradition. There's separation on time. Bagage de la coiffe. Confirmed by the DDO. And on the onboard camera, you see there's another half which falls away again out of camera range on the uh, on the starboard side. Revealing to the elements our first passenger is the S-14. That's the blue and gold box on the right. We can separate the fairing now because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere over 100 kilometers up. There's neither friction nor heating which could disturb the passengers. We can also discard any dead weight to maximize the launcher's performance. Fairing, remember, weighs almost two and a half tons, so we can get rid of it now. With its family of launch vehicles, Ariane Space is the reference providing launches of any mass to any orbit at any time. And Ariane 5, of course, the heavy lift launcher, the two other members of the family, Soyuz and Vega. Next up in our series of films, one on our first passenger, SES-14. SES has been a very faithful customer of the Ionispas family of launch vehicles, with more than 40 satellites entrusted to Ariane or to Soyuz. Our launch contract was initially for SES-12.
However, six months ago, SCS decided to launch SCS 14 instead of SCS 12 on Ion 5. We were able to accommodate this request in the short time left till launch, in spite of the particularities of SCS 14, such as the need for a purging system up to liftoff for the NASA Gold payload on board uh, SCS 14. SCS 14, built by Airbus Defense and Space in Toulouse, is the second spacecraft in the Eurostar 3000 EOR series to be launched. It will rely on its uh, electrical propulsion system to reach its final orbit, as both satellites on this launch use electrical propulsion, and thanks to the uh, performance available on the Ion 5 vehicle, we have been able to optimize the uh, delivery orbit and reducing the time needed to the, for the satellite to reach GEO. On the right, as Didio says, all is normal, this SCS-14. Under that, the black bell-shaped structure is what we call the SILDA, that's the carrying structure. Underneath, that is our second passenger. We're in the second powered flight phase, the single engine core stage burning now, the boosters having done their work. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from the ground. The launcher is sending radar and telemetry back and a network of stations keeps constant watch on the health of all our systems. We'll start receiving that information in just a moment. Telemetry is launch vehicle data, information on 1,500 parameters being collected and transmitted back to the ground. We had a look at our first passenger, now a first look at our second customer, Alia 3. YASAT contracted the launch of ALIA-3 satellite with Arian Space in September 2014. A year later, the mission analysis was initiated. Main objective was to consolidate the launch mission profile with the satellite-specific features. ALIA-3 is manufactured by Orbital ATK and is based on the new Starfree platform. It is the first of its kind to be launched with Arian-5. Throughout the years, YASAT has maintained regular exchanges between Orbital ATK and Iron Space to prepare the launch campaign and refine the launch mission. In summer 2016, Alia 3 was allocated SES-14 as co-passenger. The overall mass of the two satellites remains well below Iron 5 lift capability. To benefit from Iron 5 full performance, a specific injection strategy is implemented for this launch. With Alia 3, YASAT will increase their in orbit fleet to three satellites, thereby confirming their role as a global operator in government and commercial communications. We will soon be picked up by our first downrange tracking station located in Natal over the border in Brazil. The Brazilian Defense Department runs the station for CNES in an agreement with the European Space Agency. It'll see the lower stage burnout and separation. And what do the ground stations like and that'll do with all this information? Well, customers get immediate data on their spacecraft, and that's so important. Some data are analyzed in real time, others are studied after the flight to learn how the vehicle performed on its mission. A complete analysis is carried out about a week after each launch. So you can imagine the enormous archives this gives Ariane Space, a wealth of technical information going all the way back to the first launch of Ariane 1, 1979. We are awaiting confirmation of three events, extinction and separation of the lower stage, then ignition of the upper stage. That's due just in about 15 seconds. Everything is all right on board. As the DDO says, the launcher performing flawlessly. Tonight, a standard double launch, two communication satellites, as we wait, there you see the cutoff of the lower stage. Separation of the lower stage. And Separation EPC. ignition of the upper stage. These three commands given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. So we are now into the third, third and final powered flight phase, the single upper stage engine that will burn until plus 24 minutes and 44 seconds or 16 minutes roughly. The job of the upper stage is to take the satellites to their injection point, position them for separation, and then release them. That is its propulsion role. 
But she also has a second role, and that comes during Ariane 5's de visibilité de la station Galio. ballistics phase. That comes later on in the flight, and we'll have more on that coming up. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, so I come to give you some uh, information because uh, we have had an anomaly uh, on this uh, launch. Indeed, we lost contact with the launcher a few seconds after the initiation of the upper stage. At that time, we can consider that uh, the upper composite and the satellite have been uh, satellized, but as I have said, we lost contact. So up to now, our customers do not have contact with the satellite. We need now some time to know if they have been separated and where they are exactly to better analyze the consequences of this anomaly. I want to present my deepest excuses to our customers who have entrusted us one more time. We know that there is no launch with no risk. We know that launch is always difficult. And tonight, Ion 5 has had an anomaly. So let's take time now to better understand the situation of the satellite. Ion Space, in full transparency, will come back to you to provide you with some more information as soon as we have them. I apologize on behalf of Ion Space.